Right, here's a summary of everything about uh, nested classes. Um, here's the key up here. Uh, this yellow thing is the type that we're talking about. Uh, whereabouts it's declared. Uh, does it require an enclosing instance to be supplied or not? Um, does it uh, declare static or can it declare uh, static or non static members? Um, uh, what can you directly access from the enclosing context and what access modifiers are allowed? So you can see um, top level classes, uh, well, it's fairly obvious what you can do there. Uh, static member classes, um, they don't have an enclosing instance required. Uh, there's no enclosing instance necessary there. and. Um, uh, they can declare both static and non-static members. Um, what is it declared in? Um, is, how is it declared? Well, it's uh, as a static class member. I have the keyword static in front of us. And, and um, what's directly accessible? Only static members from any enclosing classes can be accessed. And all access modifiers are permitted. Okay, uh, non-static members, well they do need a, an enclosing instance and um, you can only declare non-statics um, and uh, it's declared as a non-static class member and uh, all members are accessible in any enclosing class and uh, you can have all Access modifiers are permitted. For a local implicitly static class, then you do not have an enclosing instance, um, and again, only non static members can be defined in the class. Um, it's declared as a in, a in a local static context. So that's um, as a uh, in, inside a uh, uh, inside a, a static method or a, a static initializer or something like that. Um, and what can be accessed in the closing context? Well, um, only static members or local final variables, and you're not allowed to have any access modifiers. I mean, the, the rest of this is, 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 well, you can read it as well as I can. Um, there's an uh, interface at the end, I'll just put that in. Because uh, you can put interface um, as a package or, yeah, as we normally would as a package or as a, a static class member. So it looks somewhat like that. Okay, so uh, th that's well, fairly obvious. It's a summary of everything, basically. Uh, before I finish, I'd just like to say uh, a few words about what people call some of these things. Now, this um, split into uh, six types of uh, nested class and uh, top-level class uh, is about as uh, fine a distinction as you can make. Um, uh, you can't really split things up much more than that and have um, any sort of meaningful concepts defined here. Now. Um, uh, this uh, local and uh, anonymous classes defined in a static context, which is a bit there and there, um, they are in fact uh, classified by the compiler if you look at the code as being static. Um, implicitly static, of course, because you can't explicitly declare such a class to be static. And uh, in my opinion, the compiler is quite correct there. Now, the uh, language spec and many books uh, get a bit ambiguous on this point. And uh, that causes problems um, when it comes to the definition of inner class. You see, inner class is, is rather poorly defined as a concept and it's one as a result that I've avoided using. 
Now, it is usually defined to mean a class which has an enclosing instance. That's why they normally start defining it. But then they start including these classes in here as well. So these implicitly static ones they tend to include also. So, so it's no longer a class which has an enclosing instance because these don't have enclosing instances. You know, because it depends in the end how, under which reading of the spec you're going to choose. Under one sort of way you could read it, it excludes these, and under others it includes them. And usually most people seem to take it to be including, until they get to look at it in detail, and then they start thinking, well, shouldn't we exclude these? So it's it's not very well defined. All right, now this is um. This is a problem that you get with specifications in general, which are all written down in terms of words. And um, of course, the Java language spec is all all down to words, and it depends on descriptions of what's going on, all written in terms of words. But um, it doesn't have to be that way. Of course, um, if you look at um, something like um, Algol 68R, there's a there's a language which was completely specified to the last minute detail. There was absolutely no ambiguity or even possibility of ambiguity. It was, and it wasn't done. Very little, very few words were involved. <laughs> so it is possible to um, define a language without this sort of ambiguity, but that tends not to be the trend now because for some reason language designers like to have a bit of flexibility in there so they can shift the goalposts when things get difficult. And that's what's happened here. Certainly what's happened in, in Java and a, a number of places. This is, this is why we get this ambiguity now and again. Okay, so the rest of these concepts though, they're quite well defined. So nested class member and local anonymous, they're all well defined. And uh, Oh, yeah, as I've already mentioned, this here static member class that's sometimes called a top-level nested class, but tends not to. That's not a term that's used very often now. But uh, that's one thing that could be called top-level nested class. It could be called that sometimes. Just an alternative name. <laughs>